All right, guys, welcome to another video. Uh, so Ragnar's, uh, the numbers to his skills were actually released today. So uh, we'll just make like a quick summary video, just like some general thoughts, uh, first impressions, obviously with anything, right? There's what the stats say, and then there's uh, when the commander is actually released, you test them, right? Like for example, uh, like William Wallace, uh, his third skill looked like it was gonna be a lot better before he actually came out. It actually only buffed his skill, but not both commander's skill. Uh, Sajara, when uh, she came out, we thought uh, if Shajara was uh, the primary, right? Or the secondary, when that skill fires off, uh, anytime you get a uh, mighty healing, uh, you'll actually do true damage as well. And it actually was only applicable to her. So there could be some crazy stuff that happens with Ragnar. Uh, or not crazy, but just stuff where, uh, you know, maybe the skills read one way. And then when you actually see it come out, it doesn't work the way that it was actually written, right? I don't know if it's like a language barrier thing, or but, but you know, so, Anyways, take all of this as just theory crafting for now. So if you want the quick summary version of what I think about Ragnar, uh, I think as a standalone commander, right? I think the person you probably want to compare him to is Guan. And I think he is a little better than Guan. Not a lot, just a little bit. But with the current landscape of infantry commanders and calves, uh, if you have Guan and Scipio, obviously you have Luce and you know William Wallace, Alex and all that stuff. And then you have like the top four calves, right? We're top five calves. So I, four out of the five calves, Belly, uh, Hua, Nevsky, Joan, or William, then Ragnar is probably gonna be a skip for you because uh, if you think about where you're evaluating commanders, there's like three buckets you could put them in, put in. The first one is how the commander is as a standalone commander, right? So like a standalone commander, uh, if you take say Scipio versus Alex, everyone would take Scipio straight up as a commander over Alex but you guys already know my opinion on this <clears throat> when you start looking at the testing Lucha Alex versus Lucha Scipio I would take the Lucha Alex March over Lucha Scipio and I, I, I really think a lot of the reason why people can't get over that Lucha Alex is better than Lucha Scipio is just because Scipio is a better standalone commander right but when it comes to synergy and pairing uh, the Lucha Alex March trades better uh, Alex has a significantly better debuff than uh, Scipio and Alex is just much faster right so if you have a pairing that trades better it's faster and it's actually offering a better debuff then how can you actually make an argument that the Lucia Scipio March is better than Lucia Alex right so that kind of leads me to my second point there's a standalone commander but then you have to see the current landscape and uh, how can you actually do the pairing right like William Wallace I think is actually a solid good commander but again, if I think Alex is better as a pair with Luched than William Wallace is, then William Wallace doesn't really have an obvious home. And all of a sudden, he becomes a skip for me, right? And then the third bucket is how future-proof or how do you think uh, this commander will do in the future, right? So one, there's the actual kit of the commander themselves. So like a really, really good example of this is Scipio. Like I think he has everything, right? He has a good debuff. He has AoE. He has some march speed. He has a little bit of skill damage increase. Like he's so versatile that like any commander could come out for infantry and you can just slap Scipio with that new infantry commander and it will at least do like really good or to like potentially even great, right? But then there's the other part, which this we can't fully predict is what's the mindset of the developers at Lilith, right? Because if they want, they can make any commander relevant, right? They can make something, for example, if they just want to keep Guan around, they could have release commander that synergizes exceptionally well with, for example, silence. All of a sudden, like one uh, could be like dead in the water and come back to life. So that there's two parts of like the future proof. There's the actual kit and then there's what Lilith wants, right? And like that part, you almost have to do a little guessing game. So like one is a very significant historical figure. So uh, maybe Lilith is incentivized to keep them around. We don't know, right? But as far as the kit, himself, the kit itself, right? There's the standalone commander, when you're evaluating the kit, how that commander's kit, and then along with the other commanders that are out right now, how uh, does it actually kind of fit into the big picture where uh, do you actually have a logical pairing or a home for this commander and there's future proofing the commander. So as a standalone commander, I think Ragnar is slightly better than Guan, right? Uh, we look at his kit right here, obviously a big, big, uh, three target AOE, right? The, um, we'll look at the expertise first because it actually goes up to 2200. And then, uh, over the next two seconds, you do an additional, uh, 300, right? So if you actually 
count all of them together, um, if you hit one target, right, it's 2,800, but over three seconds. And obviously with every uh, extra target you hit, you get that 15% uh, uh, damage reduction, which is standard for every AOE commander. Uh, the second stat, uh, you just get a bunch of, uh, well, the second skill, you get a bunch of stats, right? 40% defense, 10% march speed. Uh, for reference, Guan, you get 30% attack and the 15% march speed. But with Guan's museum, that actually goes up to 35% attack and then 10% defense, right? This commander also takes 10% less normal damage, which is actually becoming increasingly more important uh, with uh, smite damage around. All right, so the second skill, right? I would obviously probably lean towards, not probably, I would lean towards Ragnar on this. Uh, even though um, it's better, but not that much better. Whereas like the active skill, right? Remember it's 2200, 2250 or 2200? 2200 plus the additional uh, 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 two seconds of 300 damage factor. Uh, I would take Juan's active skill over this, right? It's a little bit less, but you get that silence. It's so much more powerful. Uh, the third skill, this one is very interesting, right? We've never seen drain before. So there's a 30% chance when you hit with a basic attack, not only are you decreasing the, uh, uh, the enemy's attack by 20% and then reducing their march speed for two seconds, but you know, if this reads right, right? And we have to actually see it in game just cause you know, skills are written a certain way. For example, like William Wallace's third skill, we thought it was gonna apply to the primary and secondary. Uh, turns out it actually only applies to uh, William Wallace, which kind of sucks, or like Shajar, right? The uh, uh, mighty heal dealing true damage. We thought it would apply to both commanders. Apparently it only applies to Shajar. So really, really takes away from some of their value. But if this reads right, Drain, uh, for the duration of the effect, it uh, in reduces an enemy's attributes and then increases your own by an equal amount. So what this looks like is uh, there's actually a 30% chance when you get hit by a basic attack to not only reduce the enemy's attack and march speed, but you will actually gain 20% attack and 30% march speed, which uh, becomes pretty good, right? And if you look at this, there's actually no cooldown on this. So, um, you know, then it's just pure like percentages and how often it'll trigger in like in a 10 second interval. Uh, it actually becomes like pretty good, right? And then for skill, obviously it just takes 25% less skill damage. We remember in the second skill, it also takes 10% less normal damage. So uh, it actually is tankier than it, than, well, Ragnar is actually tankier than he looks uh, at first glance, just because uh, when you're taking less normal damage and skill damage, right? Like that essentially can function like a defensive stat, like defense, health. Uh, also, uh, you also get a little bit of like a uh, skill damage increase when the rage hits 70%. So this, it depends how fast you're gaining rage, right? But potentially if you have four seconds, uh, you can actually get the active, uh, the primary commander and secondary commander skill to, uh, to be increased by 15% uh, if you time it right. But at the very least, the primary commander's uh, active skill should be increased by 15% skill damage every time, right? And then obviously we already went over the expertise uh, you just go from 2000 to 2200. It's actually a relatively uh, weak expertise compared to some of the other like really, really broken ones. But uh, that's the kit, right? So there's no real like debuff besides the strain effect, which you're just affecting one enemy. You know, you're, you're making them a little slower. You're taking away 20% attack from them. It's not really good. Well, you compare that to like a three target silence. Uh, it's way more powerful, right? So overall i think this commander is probably slightly better than guan uh but as far as the current landscape if you have guan and scipio luce and then either alex or william wallace and you have the top four out of the five top five cow commanders they're just not an obvious home for this commander right and then obviously if you're going to the archer route so if you think about like asher benipal five targets right um uh ZL or Zuga Lang, five targets. Herman, three targets, but with like a really, really good debuff. Like, like even in a KVK mode where this commander goes from infantry to like more like a universal secondary that could be any troop type, there just isn't a very obvious home for them. So like for me, it's actually pretty obvious that I'm gonna end up skipping them unless something crazy happens in testing. And then also when you're thinking about future proof, because this commander is just offers damage factor and some stats, and then it's like has some tankiness ability. 
and the only thing unique about them is drain, I don't actually see them being very future-proof in the future. I mean, I just said that word twice, like kind of like a word salad, right? So really, when, who should invest as a commander, right? Because if you're a little bit more uh, uh, advanced for your account where you have the other commanders, there's no obvious spot for this. I think for a newer player that hasn't invested in Guan yet, right? Maybe this is something you could think about. Uh, you can't count on uh, that universal secondary uh, relic, right? Because you're not going to do that that like new KVK format every time, right? So it really comes down to uh, if you have Guan or not, uh, and then but like even then, right? If you don't have Guan, right? Then you're just going to probably run one infantry pair, uh, and then if you get Scipio. Uh, is it really worth investing in this commander now, or maybe just waiting until the next next infantry to come out, where it could be a lot better, right? So it's it's one of these like it's like a very like weird situation for this commander where uh you know usually if someone doesn't have guan uh, they have a newer account they're probably a little bit behind on gold heads anyways is it worth it to actually spend like the resource that you're uh, uh bottlenecked at on this commander or just wait for the future so uh in my opinion overall i think this would be kind of like a niche commander obviously it's a new shiny toy some people will want to invest in it but overall i think most people should skip it and even if you get a small upgrade uh, now investing in this commander, I don't feel like he's very future-proof. Uh, and it's probably better just to save your gold heads for something else in the future, right? Now, I could be completely wrong when it comes out. There's some testing, there's some like mechanic that we just don't foresee, but even his uh, skills, it's, it seems pretty straightforward. Like I, I feel like it's hard to mess up the description of these skills. So that's kind of my thoughts on him. Is he solid? Yes, uh, but it just, given the timing of where he's at, versus like, you know, a potential like future smite uh, infantry coming out or uh, it just, I don't think he's an invest for the majority of people, right? And I think you should skip him. So if you watch all the way to the end, you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to the video. Again, thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you next time.